morning. You join me here today at a very special venue for me. It's called Mill Farm Fisheries in Gilmorton in Leicestershire. It's a place where uh, me and my brother grew up, fished all our lives. So uh, always come back here in the winter for a bit of action. And uh, today we're going to run through winter zig fishing. You know, zig fishing people see it as a summer method where really it's all round in the winter and especially in the spring. So let's hopefully get this one in and then we'll look through all those tactics. first one of the day caught on the yellow foam so first things first we need to get the rod back out there and hopefully catch a few more now location is really important all times of year but especially in the winter the fish tend to hold up in certain areas and shoal up and kind of stay normally in that area until spring when they wake up so like I mentioned before I fish this lake quite a bit so I know, out in front of me now, you've got 24 foot and then it shelves up to a plateau and that area there is normally where they hold up. So obviously with the depths, we've tried fishing on the bottom before but it really isn't the one. The zigs normally all year round produce but winter they really come into their own here which is you know bizarre in a way. Um, so playing around with the depths and the colours are really important. So to start with I've gone 16 foot on one, 12 on the other and I'm just going to keep playing around with heights and like I say with colour of foam as well so keep plugging away and hopefully catch a few more Right, let's run through the zig rig in more detail now going from the hook bait you can see I've got a bit of foam now I do normally use foam or cork reason being is is obviously a long hook link and I want it to be as buoyant as possible the worst thing you can have is if you're fishing a pop-up and it's out there for a while obviously water soaks into that and then it can affect the buoyancy and the last thing you want is your hook bait moving there you want it bolt upright all the time so as you can see the size there it's around I normally use 10 mil as a guy that's a little bit bigger um, because of the size of the hook so moving down to that I've got a size 8 mixer now I use mixers a lot in well nearly in all my zig fishing reason being is they're razor sharp and they are purpose surface fishing so they're a lot lighter as well so today I'm using a size 8 Normally I'd use size 10s and 12s but I've been fishing with a few people that use 4s and 5s and uh, for years I've always thought that's too big because when you've got something mid-water you've got to imagine if you're fishing like a big hook bait or a big hook obviously hovering mid-water that doesn't look natural at all you wouldn't get an 18 mil boilie fluttering through the water you know slowly so you've got to try and imitate what's out there so obviously in the spring you've got bugs or if you spot over the top you get seeds bits of corn and various different particles so going from that with the hook size the logic behind it is is when the fish comes up to the hook bait they've already committed so the size of the hook can sometimes be irrelevant so whereas if you're fishing on the bottom obviously the weight of it affects the fish picking it up and they know if there's something up with it whereas as it's already popped up and it's already there it doesn't really matter so going down you'll see a little tiny bit of silicon basically a couple of reasons why I've got that on there one it neatens it up and also when you tighten down sometimes the hook link can kick at an angle and the hook won't sit straight so with that it will always sit right and obviously you've got that little curve almost like a bit of shrink tube now moving on to the hook link I'm using 12 pound end gauge today um, I can you can go down to you know six pound but you've always got to you know look at the environment and what you're fishing in and the fish you're fishing for as well I wouldn't be fishing for you know 20 30 pounders if with six pound line then it's weedy it's just not safe so obviously today a smaller fish in here and there's not much weed about so I can go you know can go really thin but you've got to imagine obviously with that being up in the water be mindful that the fish will see it if you are fishing a thick mono or anything like that so moving down to the lead system next thing along 
you see an anti-tangle sleeve. Now the reason being is obviously this is a long hook link. So obviously as it goes out it's wanting to come back on itself. So that prevents it. Obviously every time I cast out in all my fishing, but especially zigs, you've got to stop it before and watch the hook link kick out and all these little edges make a big difference. So moving along, got a lead clip set up. Now you might look at that and think that's a big old lead. Now today I'm using two ounce leads. Reason being, fishing close in, I don't really feel the need to drop the leads. You know, there's not a lot of weed about, so it's safe to do so. Whereas if I was fishing for bigger fish or in a different situation where I'd want to drop the lead, old fish as heavy lead as I can get away with. Reason being is, you think you've got your hook link, say 10 foot for example, mono are stretching it and as the fish come along they snatch at the hook bait. So I want as heavy lead as possible to set that hook home. Now a lot of things, well weight when it's in the water doesn't weigh as much. So for me, I want it as heavy as possible, fish hits it and then instantly leg comes off fish comes up in the water. Now, especially when you're on your own, if you've got three, four ounce lead bouncing around on your tip ring, that is when you can lose fish. So if it's weedy, you're fishing for bigger fish, heavier lead for me, and uh, obviously always make sure you drop the lead as well. As you can see, I'm fishing really deep zigs. 16, I think that's 16 foot this one, so casting it is a bit of <laughs> a bit of ag, especially with these trees. So what I've been doing is line them on the mat. So as you can see, it's nice and wet, so the mono hook link would actually stick to it. So put your hook bait in the corner, and then if you actually lie, let's bring that lead down. Lie the hook link on the mat, and as you can see, it's sticking to it. So that way. As long as you turn round, like you would a normal cast, and obviously forget that you've got that hook, hook link there. You know, it is quite scary, but as long as it's out of the way of anyone, lying down there, you can see it's going to get out there absolutely fine. And obviously, as it's going out there, like I mentioned before, always watch it and always wait for two splashes where the leg goes in, then you see the hook bait kick round. So let's get it back out there. Now one little tip for when you're winter fishing is something I do a lot is being prepared. So get a fish, obviously, like I've mentioned before, the shoal's there, the fish are active, so make the most of it, so be prepared. Now, as you can see here, I'm very, very sad and have a lot of zig rigs tied up on the Guru rig box, but as you can see there, just make a note, I've got size eight hook, eight pound line, so get the fish in the net, and as you can see there, got them ready to go, unravel it, tie it back on and I'm fishing within minutes. So making the most of the time. Right, sadly we're going to have to call it a day now. The, uh, the light's going as you can see, so got to pack up and get gone. But hopefully a few of those zig tips will help you out through the winter, especially coming up to spring next year. You know, they really are a deadly method. So get out there and give them a go.